We're continuing our coverage now of Eric Matson and his homecoming this afternoon. I was there with Sheriff Kurt Freitag, who worked with Eric and was part of the second Welcome Home Parade in the small town of Freeborn this afternoon, where the family lives. Well, I, I kind of look at today as like cel celebratory, like you said, but it's also a day of perseverance. And perseverance on the individual level with Eric. Uh, he's, this happened in January. We're now in the middle of October and he just now came home. So he persevered. But when we take a look at it on the, the grand scale of law enforcement and the, the climate that we're in today, especially in the metro areas, all up and down the West Coast, um, Chicago, Minneapolis, Wisconsin, New York. Law enforcement to some degree is, is under assault. You know, we're kind of, uh, I don't want to say isolated or insulated here because we do see a little bit of it. But for the most part, I think that the people of Freeborn County and the surrounding counties do appreciate their law enforcement. But as a whole for all the things that law enforcement's been going through and some of these other states and cities that I named, it's a thing of perseverance for them. And they're really going through some tough times. For people who don't know what kind of deputy law enforcement officer he was, talk about who, who Eric is. Eric, first off, Eric is a guy who's he's very quick with a smile. He loves a good joke. He loves telling a good joke. Um, he's always upbeat. You know, he's not one of these guys who's kind of a Debbie Downer and dragging his heels and, you know, saying the negative things first. Eric's kind of the opposite of that. That's why he was always fun to work with. And I always appreciated having my shifts overlap or just run with his shifts because he was just, he was a fun guy. He was a fun guy and he served his community well. You've talked to his family? I have. And you've talked to him? Not yet. Okay. Tell me how they're doing, and I know that he must be exhausted. Um, he's had a very long day today. You know, he flew in from uh, Omaha and, you know, landed at the Oton Airport, and we greeted him there. It was kind of a big, big to do. A lot of squad cars from all over the place, and that was cool to take part in. And, uh, he spent some time in Waseca and, you know, with his former co-workers and supervisors and friends and everybody, family up there. And then he came back home today. I was kind of surprised with the number of people who showed out just to, to show support for Eric and for law enforcement in general. So that was really good to see. Why were you surprised? Well, you know, today's not the very best day. I don't think we're even going to hit 40 degrees <laughs> okay. and it was snowing earlier, but people still put that aside and, and wanted to show support to Eric as, as we bring him home. What, so does, cool. what does his wife say and the road that's ahead? I mean, he's, the recovery is, is not over even though he's left the hospital. I talked with his wife, you know, before us meeting here and I, I told her how amazed I was with uh, the amount of progress I've seen of Eric since the last video that I saw of him. And although he's not walking unsupported, um, he's walking with someone supporting his arm. Where the last video I saw of him, he was walking with someone standing behind him and kind of bear hugging him and, and stabilizing him. So he's made huge strides Megan, his wife, said that he's, he's able to pull his own shoes off. He's, he's doing a lot of things that, on his own that is, uh, you know, big improvements just within the last days. Do we hope to see him back in law enforcement in the years to come, or does Boy, that look I, like? I don't know. You don't know if that's something that will happen? I don't know. We always hold out hope. Oh, absolutely. Let me take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about how law enforcement has changed, even in small communities. I'm glad that you have the support here, um, but there's an, 
instability that I think makes those of us who support law enforcement nervous for y'all. Wasika police officer Eric Matson was shot in the line of duty back in January. He almost died. It has been a long road these last nine months, and many prayers later, he is now home. As we know, there have been several high-profile events involving police officers over the last several months and negativity surrounding law enforcement. I was in Freeborn, the Matson's hometown this afternoon, where family friend Sheriff Kurt Freitag talked to me about Eric and these last nine months. It's great that Eric Matson was able to come back home. It's great that he survived this. Uh, there was a time there when his family wasn't sure, you weren't sure, uh, that his community had hoped that he would come home. And here we are, 10 months later, and he is home, and that's fantastic. It speaks uh, louder, though, more of uh, the overall what's happening in law enforcement. I mean, you guys go out on these calls and you never know what's going to happen. That day back in January, Eric had no idea that this was going to happen. Uh, talk to me about the society, uh, the changes as a whole, the, the downward trend maybe of respect and, and how that changes your job. You know, we have seen a little bit of that here, but like I mentioned earlier, it's not it's not prevalent like it is in the metro areas. But it always serves as a reminder that, that we can't trust any situation to play out as it has in the past. You know, there's variables that come up that we either know about or we don't know about that changes the dynamics of things and could make it a lot more dangerous for us. And so we have to really keep our head on a swivel more now than ever before. and pay attention to you know the people in the area things that are in the area people's you know their emotional status is that really what's changed i mean there's one thing to be said about society and and officer involved shootings whether it's an officer shot or somebody shot by an officer that's a whole another piece to this but mental health has been something that has been uh being more addressed uh, because the need has gotten greater? Yeah, we, we now have mandatory training dealing with people who are in mental crisis. You know, it's called crisis intervention training, CIT. And, uh, you know, it's become mandatory training for us because it, it's increasing so much at an alarming rate, not just in Minnesota or Southern Minnesota, but throughout the United States. It's, 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 a, it's a genuine problem. And we end up dealing with these people for a variety of reasons. And they're very unpredictable, um, extremely on the edge. And we have to just be so careful in how we, how we approach them. The last time you and I met to talk about Eric, it had just happened. Uh, we've talked since. But in the time that this happened to Eric and now, we've had George Floyd, and that's changed a lot. How does your conversation with your deputies, how is it different now than what it was a year ago? Is it different? Not a lot. You know, in Freeborn County, we rely on our policies. We rely on statute and procedure and it doesn't matter who we're dealing with whether the person's black white hispanic asian it, it doesn't matter sexual orientation political affiliation none of that matters the only thing that matters is that we provide the very best service that we can for the people of our county and those who are visiting our county and that we follow our policies procedures statutes so that uh, we get it right the first time we want to provide them the service that we can. The respect of law enforcement, I think some people would like for the light to shine on the negative and say that it's just so bad because officers and law enforcement as a whole is bad and corrupt. I think they are in the minority. You and I having this conversation, I'm pretty sure you think that they're in the minority. How do we change 
and, and bring that respect level back. Is it in the hands of the media? Is it in the hands of, of you and what law enforcement is doing? I mean, what do we do? I think for law enforcement, we continue acting in the professional manner that we do. And despite what some people say about us that, you know, we, we drive around and look for people to shoot or to beat or, or any, any of those bad things that we hear people talk about, we prove them wrong through our actions and actions that we have always taken. Being fair, being professional, being complete. And in time, I think our actions are going to show people that we have always been this way and will always continue to be this way. And I think when people continue to see that of us, I think the rhetoric of you know law enforcement being corrupt, bad, we don't care about people, we just go out and hurt people, I think that's gonna be more and more of a false narrative that people will see.